Well, um, the three people that are coming up uh, now, they are all champions. They have been in, in their history. They, they don't do it anymore, but they started off doing that and um, they range from slam champions of the world. No, Europe, UK, Roundhouse, Universe. Yeah, oh, it's all right. Don't worry about it. Um, and like the youngest ever ones and all of this kind of stuff. So um, for the people who are taking part in the slam later on, no, these are, these are the heroes. Um, so we've got Deanna. <laughs> They've all actually written the pieces that they're going to perform tonight specifically for this night. As you may have noticed from my um, set earlier, this can be quite tenuous links as to how you write about climate change. But in our heads, it makes a lot of sense, um, like how we've come to those conclusions. Um, we probably just need a lot longer to explain how that happened. Um, but first of all, we're going to have up Deanna Roger. And um, all three of these poets are some of the best in the city. And because this city is so good at poetry, that means they're some of the best in the whole world. So, um, you know, this is a good thing. And um, I think... <laughs> huh? Yeah, well, um, does anybody here like go to poetry nights? Yeah, see, no pressure at all because nobody's seen it ever before. So they'll just be like, yeah, this is obviously what the best is. And we're like, yeah, no one's going to disagree. It's all good. Um, so I'm just going to introduce them all now and then they will just come up one after the other. So first we'll have Deanna Roger, then we will have Ray Antrobus, and then we will have Zia Ahmed and um, they will do one piece each for you and then we will do Islam at which point you need to be like really noisy and like X Factor-ish and stuff like that. So um, please welcome to the stage, Deanna Roger. Thank you very much. Hello. So um, as Sabrina mentioned, yeah, like it kind of kick spurred me on. I'm writing a, a show at the moment about, um, about darkness and light and it kind of feeds into artificial light and how much light we use in London and in cities and why. Um, and, so, and so like with this in mind and that in mind, I wrote this. Um, so it's an excerpt from my show um, and I'm not gonna give you an introduction to the seven pages that went before it, but you'll just get this. Also, I did train as an actor so I can project, so I'm gonna put down the mic. <laughs> 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 Okay. The futurist movement has influenced our approach to technological advancements as pro positive progressions. In cities, public lighting is a norm, with an estimated 7.5 million streetlights in the UK and the global lighting industry is expected to be worth 100 billion euros by 2020. We spend an extortionate amount of time and money researching, experimenting and marketing like despite having 12 hours of it. London never seems to sleep. What type of light are we searching for? Charging the city, bold proximity, cinemas in the day, restaurants all night, darkness swallowed, no natural light, no fate, switch controlled and it's beautiful, the street lights shine bright so the sky is lit all night, no rest, no rest no relief, no silence, no stopping, none of that reflective shite. The shite that makes you blind and fly too high from home. Here is where I belong. On an earth that sparkles like a tinsel bauble. Where seeing is 24 hours and universal light is dethroned. Suntan, sunbeds, sundial, clocks, weather, TV, news or phone app. Everything you ever need to know. iPad, computer, laptop screens, comfort dreams with incessant beeps. There's no nothing to be afraid of if you can always see. So I'm tripping off this light. Broadway billboards, trains, tubes, the lights don't flicker like they used to. There are reassuring alarms every few yards. There's no need to stop. We glow in the dark, man-made stars shoot shadows, no need to sleep anymore. Speeding cars flash lights on bright indicate that these days stretch round everlasting in this electricity. This safe, controlled, electric city. A futurist artist called Giacomo Bala painted the street light, the study of light. This painting was inspired by the concept of artificial light dominating the natural light of moonshine. 
But despite us harnessing the power of artificial light, only stars produce natural light. They are superheated state of matter. There are no two stars the same, like no two days, like no two people. Some stars look like they are touching. These stars exist in binary systems. They are miles apart, but they are connected and they mutually orbit each other. There's some science that suggests that we, humans, are made from the same properties as stars. I no longer trust the stars. Those lights hold the earth beneath them, tilting their arrogant noses and peering down at humanity like we are a small child. There's nothing to see, they say. There's nothing for you to know, they say. So I murder the moonshine with this flashy guy by my side, buying everything money can buy. In defiance, cause I hate the naturalness of recycling. New everything. I need new everything. I hate the rough improvisation of nature. I need order and control. Concrete that road. Let no weeds grow through. Faithful in their photosynthesis. Let them die. Cut down those trees. I can't see, I need it cleared. Don't walk on the grass, shoes at all times, eyes down, time is watched, taken, monitored, kept, be on time. Never lose track of time, it's in digits on the wall, put it in your pocket, wear it on your wrist, see how the light sparkles the gold that cages it, the gold rescued from the dark pits of earth and brought under spotlights and magnifying glass because that's what it deserves. It deserves to be seen, on show, like clothes in every shop window, let them glow all night, stop walkers walking past, shoot desire through the glass. Thank you. <laughs> what? Wow. That was Diana Roger. Jesus, that was amazing. Was, what was that you were performing tomorrow? Do you want to do that? Do you want to say that now? <laughs> She's performing tomorrow. She's amazing. It's at the Albany in Deptford. Yeah. Cool. Um, wow. No, no pressure. First, Sabrina's like, these are the best poets in the world. And then <laughs> put me on, on. All right. Wicked. Amazing. So this is um, a poem. Uh, was asked to write about climate change and um, I really struggled with it and I thought, okay, there's this poetic form which I discovered when you write a poem and then you criticise yourself for writing it and I thought that would be a good thing to do for a political poem. Okay, it's called Ode to Owen. Green budget halved in the grip of a man who shakes more hands than he holds, who knows the slash better than the marks they leave on the ground. Blame the Chinese power stations, India, America. Responsibility is a foreigner with a name pronouncing pollution. Oh, Owen. Tell the men with castles that they need canoes. Lie to their tears when it's too late to stop the flood. There is violence in truth. When it hits, it wins and fires for stomach. We're sucking too much turbulence from our whirling failure. Who isn't frightened of what rips doors and uproots houses? <laughs> Question one. Can writing poems about climate change change anything? Answer. The first draft of this poem was called Ode to Owen Peterson. <laughs> yes. His name is Owen Patterson. <laughs> Ignorant poets writing about political issues need to research and channel their education through poetry. Question two. What will I do with my educated opinion now I have written a political poem? Whew. The evening I wrote this poem, I fell asleep in the kitchen of my shared flat, leaving the heat and all the lights in the house blaring. <laughs> and when my flatmate came home to ask what I was doing, I said, writing a poem about climate change. <laughs> my educated opinion has intensified my guilt about this incident. 
Question three, really though, what are you going to do? I have signed anti-climate change cuts on someofus.org, 38 degrees and change.org. I will participate in protests and not shy from confrontation with climate change skeptics. It's about the facts. Speaking of facts, I'm a teacher. By 2016, climate change will be removed from the UK national curriculum. When I told my mother this, she said, isn't the national curriculum the most dangerous form of censorship? Fact. If more people thought like my mother, there would be no Pattersons, no Goves. Actually, 98% of people probably do think like my mother. Thank you. I am the uh, cool. I can't get out of my head. I've just been sleeping. I can't get out of my bed. I need to eat things. I open the cupboard, a packet of fig rolls and a can of Vimto. I haven't left the house for a couple of days. I've got the TV on, got the radio playing. Songs that remind me of you. I open the fig rolls and try to watch the news. I stare at the telly. Politicians pretending to care in their wellies. <laughs> I want to send you a text. Don't, you'll say something you regret. Just think of something else. I won't blame it on myself. I'll blame it on the weatherman. You can't blame this shit on Michael Fish. Broken hearts and flooded paths. Will your government, yes, we accept these floods might be related to climate change, most probably highly likely. <laughs> Don't worry, we're going to do all of the good things, but you, the people, you need to watch your carbon footprint. It's mainly your fault. They always pass these things down. I look round the house. Got the TV on, got the radio playing songs. That I turn the radio off. <laughs> Fair enough. If we do the little things, what about the big stuff? I eat another fig roll. <laughs> Open the Vimto, stare at my phone. Mate, seriously, leave it alone. Sip of the drink, go on computer, click on a link. They like to blame it on the other sides and say the grass ain't much greener on the other side because we're much cleaner than the other sides. Like China. <laughs> oh my God. There's so many people. Have you seen all the smog? They all drive cars and I feel for them because they don't get to go to the park when it's real dark. Lay back on the grass and just gaze at the stars. Plus, their Olympics weren't as good as ours. <laughs> Team GB. Also, they've all just started to eat meat at the same time. <laughs> it's insane, all of the methane produced to make their beef steaks. Our beef steaks bring all the boys to the yard. <laughs> and they're like, it's better than yours. And our cows, our cows belch nice gas. <laughs> another sip of the drink, another click of the link. I'm British, so let's talk about the weather. <laughs> it's a way of breaking the ice. I'm British, but don't mention climate change and how it's melting the ice. Why are you such a downer? London's gonna be hotter than I be for this weekend. Whoa. <laughs> this, guy, this guy is like, since 2000, the UK's had its five wettest years and its seven warmest. And there's a higher risk of flooding. There's clear evidence to support this. 
A warmer atmosphere contains more water, causing more intense rainfall. This and higher sea levels in the English Channel means... I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I'd like to introduce to the panel, in the interest, in the interest of balance, <laughs> an old rich guy with some kind of title and an interest in the Bible, a fossil into fossil fuels. We'd really like to hear your views. He's like, sometimes it's hot, sometimes it's not. <laughs> I don't agree with these patterns. This time it rained a lot and it took a while for the rain to stop. Shit happens. <laughs> another link, another link, another link. The rich get richer, the poor get poorer, the wet gets wetter and the dry gets drier and the warm gets warmer and sea levels get higher and cold plunge lower forest on fire like a funeral pyre rock paper scissors blood is thicker than water oil is thicker than blood water is quicker than both and when you get hit with a flood your feet will stick in the mud you can't move stuck in a rut feeling under the weather you you want to do things to make you feel better and it all comes undone when all of a sudden a flood will just come and you're submerged in this hurt and you examine the ruins, feel like it's all been mostly your own doing, beat yourself up, go round in circles, why buy a burglar alarm when you've already been burgled? It won't make a sound because the power's gone out, acid rain just splashing brain and my mind's fried, why try? In hindsight, but right now there's no right side, wrong side, feeling a strong tide. You want to leave something behind, whatever it be. She wants to leave a poem, he wants to leave a family, something tangible and substantial. And I will, everyone will. We all leave this, this, this planet. And sometimes I can't stand it, but. It's the reflection of self meets projection of self. And I don't know if I believe in the heaven or hell, but this is all real. It's this earth, it's me, it's you, it's us. And I don't want to fuck it up. I just want to leave the best version of me. Cool, thank you. Thank you.